Good afternoon, and thank you for coming to our press conference of Baby Girl, which is in competition. Uh, before we start, I'm going to introduce our guest uh, from, from the right uh, uh, out there. It's mm -hmm. Sophie Wilde. <laughs> Harris Dickinson. Shall I open it for you, Dave? Yeah. Antonio Banderas. The film's writer director, Halina Rain. Yes. And Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right there. Okay. Um, hey, sir. Hello, Miss Kidman. Um, to quote the immortal musical group, um, Salt and Pepper, let's talk about sex. And I think as a society, we are conditioned with a language. If I'm hungry, what I want to ask for, and I, I'm allowed to have more. But was this, when it comes to sex, somehow or another, we're not given the language skills for that, or we're not told that's OK. So for Nicole and for Harris, because of the sequences that your characters go through, what kind of conversations did you have? And what do you hope audiences discuss about what is allowed or what our desires should be able to allow us to do? Harris? <laughs> okay. Well, that's a lot of questions in there. Yeah. Um, I think this film is obviously, yes, it's about sex. It's about desire. It's about um, uh, your inner thoughts, it's about secrets, it's about marriage, it's about um, truth, power, consent. Um, so language for sex, it's so complicated, that answer, because what is the, this is one woman's story, and this is, I hope, a very um, liberating story. It's told by a woman through her gaze, which is what I, Helena's script, she wrote it, she directs it. Um, and that's, to me, what made it so unique was that suddenly I was going to be in the hands of a woman with this material. And it was very, very deep to be able to share those things. And so, in, and very freeing. Um, but she speaks beautifully about it, so I'd like <laughs> to give her the mic just as the director to start because uh, I don't want to dominate this. <laughs> Do you want me to answer the question? Just talk. <laughs> just, just randomly talk. You have a voice, and you've been given it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly how to answer your question, because it was directed to my wonderful actors. <laughs> but I will say this. Um, it's been an honor to work with them. But it's also just I'm very delighted to be able to make a film about female desire. But it's also a film about a woman in an existential crisis. And it has many layers. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited to talk about it today and very grateful to do it here in Venice. And I, I would like to put the film in, in context a little bit. When I saw it for the, you know, for the, for the selection, uh, it hit me like, you know, it, it brought me back to those 90s, uh, you know, erotic thrillers. And I, I, was, I was just like so happy to see how you have upped the, the game, you know, is, 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 very, is very interesting. The region around there, you work with Paul Verhoeven. So I'm sure some of it, you know, some of that interest. Can you talk a little bit about that referencing? Uh, yeah, I work with Paul Verhoeven. We were here actually at the Venice Film Festival with Black Book in 2006, and I'm a big fan of his work, and I wanted to do something in that space, but very much like Nicole said, from a female gaze. That doesn't mean that the film is not also about masculinity. You know, it deals with femininity, masculinity, power, control, sexuality, and all those different things. And I think at the core of it, for me, it is about the question, can I love myself in all my different layers? And I hope it will function as a tribute to self-love and liberation. I think we have one here. <clears throat> no, it, you have the mic right there. <laughs> Thanks. No for, uh, for Nicole, I wonder if you see this as sort of part two uh, to what was a terrific career high point with Big Little Lies uh, in that abusive relationship, if this is, uh, you know, a more positive version of an S&M relationship. Um, 
It's a version. So I don't think there's a judgment attached to it. It's, that's for each person that sees the film to interpret. Um, their interpretation of it will be wildly different. I'm sure if we polled everyone in this room, they would have a completely different reaction to um, Romy and the way she behaves. Um, my, my connection to it is that I'm, I want to examine human beings. I want to examine women on screen. I want to examine what it, what it means to be human and in all the facets of that and the labyrinth of that. Um, so Big Little Eyes is actually very different, but this is definitely um, leaves me exposed and vulnerable and frightened and all of those things when it's given to the world. But making it with these people here, it was delicate and intimate and very, very deep. Right now, we're all a bit... Um, nervous. <laughs> so I was like, hope my hands aren't shaking. Um, but at the same time, really proud to still be invited to a festival like this and to be forging ahead with, with cinema, with films that are still being made, and particularly with um, women at the helm. You know, it's part of, I said it, I can't remember how long ago at Cannes at a, at a press conference, I went, I'm going to put my weight behind a lot of women now in terms of directors to try and change the um, the ratio, and um, this is all part of it, you know. Uh, how many women are in the um, festival? Uh, se across this, across the, the, the session, I don't know, but several. It's increased. And in competition? Yes, in competition, one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. So we're, so we're changing more. it. <laughs> so if, it, seem, it seems, before I, I, I go back to you, it seems that it's time to give the word to uh, Antonio and Harris, mm -hmm. because we've been talking a lot about women and women mm. at the helm and women in power. And I think that the, the, the balance of this film is it's really, uh, uh, and, and Sophie as well, who has a generation, you know, she represents a new generation. Uh, it's, it's really in the balance between the, 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 you guys all work in the different role and, and opposite gender. Um. No, if there is a question specifically about that, that you said. Uh, Sorry, here you go. Um, what I remember is that I used to come to these type of festivals <clears throat> in Venice, or Berlin, or Cannes, with movies that actually in our, uh, in our days would be impossible to do. Mm. They were movies that would be very highly criticized, or they it would just jump in the territory of the politically incorrect. And uh, we were kind of living in a, in a world in which uh, the politically incorrect established uh, um, kind of a censorship, a self-censorship uh, with artists. And I think uh, when I read the script uh, that Helena gave me, I found a way just to, to say, oh my God, there is somebody that is just uh, thinking out of the box, that he got actually you know, the, the strength and the, and the courageous uh, mind to just put on, this, on the... On the um, screen things that we all think we are in a way you know uh, yeah uh, we are prisoners of our own instincts yes you are animals you know and uh, there is something about nature that is there is nothing democratic about nature <laughs> none of uh, which are here uh, we, we didn't ask to be born we didn't ask to be humans or animals or a plant or whatever you know we are you know, uh, attached to what we are. And, and this is a woman that actually talks about that and, and it talks with an incredible freedom. And I was so proud to be part of something like that in our days in which we are all put in boxes and uh, in movements and, in, and art should be out of that. So that is uh, the reason that I just uh, jump into this project and I, it made me so proud to be part of it. We were so lucky to have both of them because they were, it was the four of us together on a journey and it was really, really intimate. And then Sophie comes along and shakes the whole thing up, <laughs> which was great because we had this sort of Antonio and I as our generation and then Harris and Sophie coming and the two generations colliding, which yes. is really interesting too. Because for us, the story is also very much about two generations. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that it's about sexuality, it's very much about how different generations view these topics in a different way and how we can learn from each other.
Yeah, I think Harris and Sophie, you should you should chime in. It's it for you represent a different generation in the film. You you also are not in power. The film is also a film about power. No, yeah. Um, well, it's interesting because I think from the minute I started, and 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 Sophie and I spoke about this as well, is that particularly with Samuel, is that he represents within the film such a, a specificity to like the confusion within a young man of 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 now. Um, separate from uh, the, the journey with Romy, I think there is, in general, a confusion about how to conduct yourself and uh, how to conduct yourself within sex as well, you know, and the conversation around that and what that means. And, um, and I think from the get-go, just going back to Scott's question as well, is that Helena was always um, ready to dissect and um, challenge that and, and challenge the nuance of the behaviour. And so I think that opened up a whole, uh, uh, a whole new world of the film for, for me and, and really made me excited by it. the role and, and, and to do it with these guys. And, you know, such an honour to be able to work alongside such legends. And then, of course, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately it's sort of interesting. I feel like Esme would love this film, you know, as a young woman who's so keen on progression and I think this film really explores the sort of boundaries and expanses of what it means to be a woman and so I think it's very sort of um, relevant uh, and Esme is all about relevancy and progression. So. Mm. I think we have a question. I love how Sophie at the end of the movie we really try to give Sophie the, almost the most truthful words. Um, I don't know if everybody has seen the movie but and I, I love how she delivers them and how we, as maybe a little older generation, can learn from that and be inspired by that. Yeah. I think we have a question there and then here. Right here. Yeah. No, no, he, he, no, no, he's, he's right there. He's behind, before. Hello, <laughs> uh, 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 Peter Paul Hood, uh, Interfilm Germany. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about what you mentioned the thrillers, the erotic thrillers of the uh, 1980s, uh, and in the end, always the women were being punished, mm. like yes. uh, fatal attraction. And, yes. And one one is expecting something like that, but you don't do it. No. And that I found very interesting. Can you can you talk about that? Why she doesn't have to be punished? Because I love. Thank you. <laughs> Why does she not have to be punished? this time uh, because I think we all uh, men women giraffes whatever no all beings uh, have you know different sides within themselves and we all have a beast living inside of ourselves for women we have not gotten a lot of space yet to explore this behavior um, not only uh, how strong we are but also how weak we sometimes are and so uh, my personal belief, I was raised by my parents in a way that I don't believe in good and evil. I think we are all both. And we need to keep shining a light on that because the moment we suppress it, that's when it becomes dangerous. So that's why I don't want any of my characters to be punished. I just want them to be. And I think that's when we can really connect to them and feel less alone. There's one here. <clears throat> Hello, Helen Barlow from Australia. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi. Sophie, um, you, I, a lot of people don't realise that you're Australian, and I'm telling them how <laughs> you just won an award, darling. Congratulations. Thank you. For Boy Swallows Universe, which is one of Netflix's big shows. And talk to, talk to me. I mean, uh, you really are on your way. Um, your character says in the movie mm. that you look up to, up to Nicole's character. Was that a case mm. in real life? And Nicole... What was it like to work with Sophie? <laughs> Did you have any part in the casting or could perhaps the director could comment on the casting? Thank you very much. I mean, I feel like I've very much grown up with Nicole. Like, Moulin Rouge is one of my favourite films. Didn't tell you that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's such an honour to work with someone who I admire so much and who's just, like, a master of their craft. So it really feels like such a privilege. Yeah, we, had, <laughs> we actually had a great um, time because we could also talk about... Um, history of our, just the industry and mm. she went to NIDA and we talked about um, growing up in Australia, what that means, family and so separate to everything we were able to just bond that way and I remember when I saw that she won Best Actress um, I texted her going, oh my <laughs> god <laughs> so 
um, it's beautiful to see these um, these young people, young Australians, coming up and taking the big bite out of the world that they deserve. This Sophie, watch out, everyone. There's <laughs> <laughs> a question down there. Yeah. Hi, good morning, Maria Guerra, Quinotico, mm -hmm. Spain. I'm here. Uh, well, congratulations, and thank you all for this very um, disturbing movie. I, I wanted to uh, ask you, Nicole, well, to thank you, because I, my, um, women my generation grew up watching your beauty. And I remember Emma Thompson said in, in a Berlin festival that women our generation were taught, were taught to hate our bodies. And I think uh, for my generation, for us, gener our generation is very important the way your body is seen, filmed in this uh, movie. And I was wondering when along your way uh, did you decide that uh, your movie, your body was this, I mean, somehow um, a weapon, or I mean, it's part of the battlefield, of the feminist battlefield. I mean, the thing is, I approach everything artistically, so I don't think of the minutia. <laughs> I just go, how do I give over to this particular character at this time fully um, without censoring my director? Um, and that's why it is important to feel safe with them, because I will just complete abandon um, to the story, to the nature of the character that I'm playing. So I don't think about bodies per se. I just think about how do we tell the story and what is the what is your vision for it and how do I help you and how do we get there? And then we have big conversations, obviously, ab about the psychology of the character, all of those things. But what I'm bringing is just myself with openness and availability. And I've always done that with directors, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But its I don't know any other way. I couldn't go into the environment protecting myself and being worried. I have to just go, OK, what do you want to do here? But I do think you brought up something very important, and mm -hmm. that is women's relationships with their bodies. And that is exactly why I wanted to make this movie, and the female orgasm, the huge orgasm gap. That still exists, people. Take note, men. So. <laughs> That's part of we also go. the we joy of this it. movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Harris. But uh, what did you say, Harris? That everyone deserves a good orgasm. <laughs> um, Sorry, Helena. Please. <laughs> no, I was done. But thank you for that question. <laughs> the gentleman here. Yeah, him. Um, thank you. Sorry, good morning, everyone. This is Xin Xu from iPhone.com from China. And my question will go to Nicole Kinema. I mean, in your opinion, your, from, your, from your perspective, how do you view the role struggling with her uh, expressing her own sexual design in this film? And because previously we saw so many uh, actresses or female roles who have been exploited their own opportunities to express this, their own sexual design previous films. So how do you think about this and how, her decision in this film? Thanks. Um, in terms of... In, in, in terms of her character? Her struggling with... Exp her struggling it, with... Uh, struggling for self-expression, sexual uh, mm. uh, yes. self-expression, as, as usually in, in films they are, they are frustrated. Or there's ex yeah. exploitation. Yeah, there's exploitation. Of. Um, I think that's what made it so compelling was being in the hands of Helena because I knew she wasn't going to exploit me. I mean, however anyone interprets that, I didn't feel exploited. I felt very much a part of it. It is, it's the story that I wanted to be a part of, that I wanted to tell, and every part of me was committed to that. So for me, that wasn't at all exploitive. Um, there was enormous care taken by all of us. We were all very, very gentle with each other um, and helped each other. Um, Harris, Antonio, um, Sophie wasn't in the in the bed with us, but <laughs> 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 but in terms of it, it felt um, very authentic, protected, and at the same time real. Spe speaking of real, I have a follow-up question. I think one of the, the brilliant piece of casting was Antonio mm -hmm. in, in, in the part of the husband that is not satisfying sexually his wife. I mean, he's known for roles that are very different. And, and I think... 
It seems that at the end of the movie, that problem is fixed. Yes, it is. <laughs> Don't spoil it. <laughs> Don't spoil it. Maybe. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Alina, Alina, let, let me please who, who tell me what, what, what went, into the, went into the Cassie and Antonio about your performance, which is wonderfully generous and, and, and it's very subtle and smart. Yeah, I mean, he's, of course, <laughs> a total legend and an idol for me. Uh, but it was incredibly important that apart from his talent as an actor that we cast this role, Jacob, her husband, as someone who is very, very attractive, very masculine, so that it would not be about that at all. It is her existential crisis. If she would, before the movie, have sat him down and said, hey, listen, we need to talk, this whole movie wouldn't have, uh, you know, taken place. So in that sense, it's also a cautionary tale of like what happens when you suppress your own desires. And if they'd had the discussion earlier in their marriage. So that's why this is all it is. It's a crisis. Um, it's a crisis. I'm yeah. Following it through. But, it, but I do think also, you know, the idea of um, Antonio going, I'm here, I'm yours. And so Willing says so much about his spirit and his... That he, was, uh, that he wanted so to support lovely. us in, mm. in, in that way. It was incredible. The yeah. first conversation we had, I, I was just blown away by how he understood the script, not only his storyline or his part, but also what Romy is going through and everything you had to say about it. And so I felt completely safe with him to do this story, and it's incredibly important, the casting, and A24, of course, also plays a part in that, where they have these kind of ideas, and we are very happy, super, super happy. I think the key is what you just said about being uh, safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very important. When you do a movie like this, you have to be mm -hmm. uh, in a commun union with the person that you're working with. Um, you have to give yourself, and when I say yourself, I'm talking about both, you know, permission. And we were very careful in, in those aspects of the movie, and we knew that at some point we have to go very far away. Um, in the case of uh, Harrison and, and Nicole, it was uh, different. It was harder, right, from a point of view. But the, the people have to think that and those, those scenes are very delicate, but they have the rhythm, they have uh, depth, they have complexity. Uh, you are working in a, an environment that is, uh, you got a certain tension. Uh, so it's very important that all of those pieces are together with kindness and feeling that you are in a safe space. Um, that is coming always from the direction, and she did a great job with us, to tell you the truth. And the cinematographer, so yeah. which you should the talk people who are with us all the time, so, yeah. because the Dutch Jasper Wolf, he is our cinematographer, and he was also incredibly important. He's an, a genius in working with actors and making them all feel safe, and yeah, and also how he, yeah, visually approached this movie. I, I did instinct with him, bodies with him, and now this, and it is a wonderful collaboration. I think collaboration is the key word to this whole project for all of us sitting here. I really feel, feel like it was almost like in the theater, we were all together and collaborating on it constantly. Hey, one, one more there. <clears throat> uh, ben Dalton from Screen International. Congratulations to you all on the film. This is a question for Nicole and Harris. Uh, can you tell us about the first time you met and how long it took to get to a point where you could do those very intense sex scenes? Well, we met, we were in New York in a little rehearsal space. We had not a lot of time to make the film, so that's why we needed to um, rehearse. And there's a lot of text. I mean, there's sort of, it twists and it winds. And so we sat in a room for six hours with Elena and we just talked. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, we met before that though. You met on Zoom. First, no, no, we, even before we, that. We met before, like, at some event, but oh, then yeah. we met on Zoom, which is always <laughs> not the... We can't remember when we met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, But in terms of the actual work, we sat and we went through things, and we just shared stories, though. Primarily, a lot of it was just talking about ourselves, which is a really great way for actors to um, come together because you share things, and then gently, slowly, you start to feel... But 
because she's an actress, Helena is an actress herself, so she'd be throwing herself around the room yeah. in the rehearsal space, playing all the roles. Um, and that was fascinating, because I'd never experienced that before. Have you experienced that before? No. <laughs> she can play every role in the film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and very, very well. <laughs> so that is um, going to be the sequel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lena, multi-role. We also, we also had a really amazing uh, intimacy coordinator called Lizzie, who was like quite important for the film and um, just like uh, broke the unnecessary barrier and the conversation around what you have to do because it is it ultimately is choreography, um, you know, when you get into the like nitty gritty of those kinds of scenes, you have to be very uh, precarious with it and she's very good at just getting straight into it on a very pragmatic basis, I think, right? And that helped me because obviously I was, it's always nerve wracking, you know, constructing a scene anyway. So and then you add something intimate to it and it's very vulnerable, you know. Mm. But there was still a flow to it, which um, allowed space to move and change and work. It wasn't confined. No. And that's what I, I love to work that way. So that's where you say, well, we've got to have someone at the helm who is watching out and going, oh, here, and was able to sort of... But with that, it's also... Because it's a sacred place, the, the whatever you're doing, whether it's um, intimate, really... But everything is intimate emotionally as well. So you've got to have that, and I'm a huge believer still in the sacredness of the set or the actor's space and it never, never being violated. Because it is, it's ours, it's the bubble, and then there's the world outside. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they told me we ran out of time, and so I have to finish here. I want to thank Very our quick. guests and thank you for the thank film. Thank you for coming. Oh. Appreciate it. That was great.